Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over CSS transition effects. So I've got a web page set up, and there's not much on it. As you can see, there's just a couple of uh, blocks. And if I look at the markup for that, you can see I've just got uh, several div blocks and just some basic starting styling form. But what I want to do is experiment with transition. And I'm going to just put a transition on hover effect so we can see how that impacts what we've got going on. And let's go ahead and start off pretty simply with box number one. Now what I'm going to do with box number one is first I'm going to say how do I want it to look when I hover over it. So I'm going to go ahead and apply a hover effect to this. And I'm going to change the background color just to a super dark gray and I'm going to change the height of this box to 500 pixels. So I've made some characteristic changes to this box one and if I head back over to my browser and refresh when I hover over I can see the color changes and the box gets taller but I want to smooth that out over a period of time. So I'm going to create another rule just for box one and this one I'm going to put in the CSS transition property. Now with the transition property there's four values we can put in here although I typically only use three of them. The first is the thing that you want to change. For instance I could change just the background color and then space and then next is going to be the period of time you want this to take place. I'll have this take place over 400 ms or 400 milliseconds space and then it's going to be the style of change. I'll go ahead and start off with linear. There's several things we could put there. So I'm going to save that, head to my browser and refresh. And we'll see that now the, the box is changing height pretty quick. But you'll notice the color is more gradual. Okay, There's a smoother transition. If I made this 1s or 1 second, you'll notice that even more. So the height changes fast, but the color changes over a second, so a little bit slower. Now I can apply different effects to both of these. So I could just do a common here, comma, and then I could say, all right, well I also want to change the height. I'll change the height over two seconds, and I'll go ahead and do a ease in on that. So slightly different style, refresh, and then the box is starting to grow. It goes a little bit slower and gets faster. We'll check that out more in just a second with a, a longer duration. So that's a bit of a transition effect. Now with box two, I'm going to do something a little bit different. So box two on hover, I will go ahead and change the background color just to orange. But I'm also going to change the margin top. And I'll change the margin top to 50 pixels. Give it more margin top. So basically when I hover over box 2, kind of moves completely and changes color. This time though, for box 2, I'm going to just do one transition value. But this time I'm going to choose all as the thing that I want to change. I want to change all characteristics, basically both background color and the margin. And I'll do this over one second. And I'm going to do ease in, out, which basically goes slow, fast, slow. I tend to like that one. Browser refresh, and there we go. Both things are changing over a period of time. Now for the last few, I want to try to do a little bit of experimentation here. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and copy my box two characteristics, change this over to box three, box three. This one, I'm just going to do a transform on hover and I'm going to do a rotate and um, I'm going to rotate it I misspelled transform just 360 degrees so one revolution around and for box 3 I'll do that all over one second so really not much going on there just wanted to see that okay we can rotate that there's different things to try now if I if I extended this over, let's say, maybe six seconds, it'll be easier to notice that change in speed. So it starts off slow, gets a little bit faster. Actually, that was pretty smooth throughout. Well, one way we can exaggerate this a bit, I'm going to take this whole unit here, copy and paste. And let's mess around with box four. And let's see if we can really exaggerate this by making this 3,600 degrees. 
So now we're going to be spinning it quite a bit. Refresh, box number four. Now it's a little bit easier to tell that it's slow, gets faster, and then slows down again. So that's ease. Now the last one I want to try with box five is kind of interesting. And I don't really use this particular style too much but it's cubic bezier. And for those who are into graphic design or making vector graphics are probably much more familiar with it. But basically, instead of ease, I can put in cubic bezier, and then I can have some values in here. Now, for the values and to really get a better understanding of it, I was relying on this website, cubicbezier.com. And notice there's a hyphen there. And you can kind of control some characteristics that you want based on the time and the progression and it's going to give you the value so I see I've got 56 9 9 89 and with something like this point 56 point 0.09, point 0.09 and I think it was 89 but it doesn't matter so now I'm putting in different values head on over to my page refresh and you'll start to get some more unusual and interesting animations, or I should say transitions, because animations are a little bit different. Yeah, so with Cubic Bezier, you can make some pretty unusual transition effects. So that's kind of the gist there. We basically we put the transition property on the element that we want to affect, even though the effect is not going to happen until we hover over it. And of course, I'm using hovers, but that, and which is the most popular thing we might do for CSS, although we could have done a colon active, uh, you know, pseudo class for the clicking motion as well. Okay, so that's a little bit of CSS transition. Basically, you're controlling what you want to change, the time you want to change it, the style you want to change it, and the last value that I never even used was a delay. So I could put in something like 1s as a fourth value here, as a fourth parameter, and that would be the delay of starting the transition effect.